Hiya folks, today we're going to be talking about fascism. Yay! So I learned about this quiz here. It's called the F scale. It's not, not a quiz. It's like a personality test. Uh, it's from the 1940s. It's designed to measure fascistic tendencies. It's something I learned about in a course that I took this semester and I thought I would save doing it for a video because I think there's something really interesting about this. It's not just like a way of measuring fascism in general. It's sort of a time capsule into how people in like the late 40s viewed fascism uh, or, or at least a certain left-leaning segment of people uh, tried to pin down the fascist personality, which I think could be really interesting. So I will link this personality test thing in the description box below. Uh, I would recommend if you're gonna do it, you do it and then come back and watch me because like if you see me do it and see my rationale it may muddy your rationale when doing the exact same thing so i guess if you want your most uh raw version of your answers you doing it first and then coming back to watch mine and then seeing how we differ it might be more i guess intellectually stimulating i don't know so before we get started, I think an important thing we could do is talk about defining fascism. Uh, I'm going to go to the Wikipedia for this one. Uh, it's as good as anything when it comes to defining fascism, because as we are going to discuss here, fascism is not perfectly pinned down to like a scientific definition it's weird because during like the war periods there's all sorts of isms going around that are still around today capitalism communism socialism anarchism we have a lot of things that are a little bit easier to define than fascism fascism feels sort of antiquated as a term even though it lasted there are still fascists of a type today they may not look like the fascists of yesteryear but these personalities certainly still exist and the term can still be useful to this day in defining a certain type of authoritarian right figure so uh i actually really love this right here historian ian kershaw once wrote that trying to define fascism is like trying to nail jelly to a wall that's that's a pretty charming way of putting it uh, so a lot of people have attempted to expand the definition of fascism throughout the years and others have tried to narrow it when trying to create a historical narrative around it, which I think is very interesting. Some go as far as to say fascism is like exclusive to the time period that it started in. It, it's exclusive to the like the time and place. Uh, it's just Benito Mussolini's Italy and that's it and not even the Nazis. And then others are like, OK, yeah, the Nazis, but you can't just put everybody uh, every authoritarian into it and it's like okay we're starting to expand but we are also creating little bits of uh, criteria to exclude people from being called fascism so where are the lines what is where's the checklist of things that you have to be in order to be considered fascist if you scroll down this page a little bit you have some attempts by scholars to lay out what fascism is um, we're not going to go through all of these we're just going to go through the first one and get kind of a rough idea because there are some similarities throughout the different attempts to define it so we're just gonna go for the first one here umberto eco um so we have like a little list here that, and and the thing is you don't have to in my opinion check every single thing on the list in order to have fascistic tendencies and i sort of like the looser definition 
of fascism where it's like you don't have to be literally every one of these things because uh, people will attempt to uh, kind of reduce the impact of having some of these qualities by saying, well, doesn't have all of them. He's not literally rounding up people and putting them in camps. So I guess he can't be a Nazi, uh, which is kind of uh, how they tried to uh, reduce a lot of like Kanye's uh, rhetoric before he went like full, you know, I, I don't really want to talk about it. I love those first few albums so much that it's still a little bit traumatic to me right now but you know what i'm saying there's like a a modern example of somebody who's i don't i'm i'm a little hesitant to even call kanye a fascist because like he's also just like crazy so like where do you go he's not the best example he's not the easiest example to work with because you're always balancing like is he just a contrarian uh or is he like sincere is he crazy where does it come from i don't know does it matter i guess that's for you to decide so here we have uh the first one here is cult of tradition and i think uh rejection of modernism also sort of uh leans into some similar stuff here uh i really think these are some of the stronger elements that make up fascism and i think that's kind of the reason why it tends to lean towards like the right side of the political spectrum there's a lot of left-wing authoritarianism it, it's a very real thing but when using the term fascism it leans right because of it's always kind of looking back in a way uh mussolini was looking back to like a legacy of like the roman empire uh Adolf was uh, looking back to uh, a sort of manufactured German people, a German, a German tradition uh, that he felt defined their their destiny, their greatness and whatnot that I know that's super oversimplified, but it always does tie itself to the past so i think that's a very strong element and it's often like a manufactured past those who would call donald trump a fascist would say that his rhetoric towards like make america great again is uh first of all yeah it's leaning very much into an idealized past and perhaps a manufactured past uh where it's like when were we like the ideal American, like the, the 60s, the 50s, the 40s? Are, are you saying we didn't have problems during that point? If that's if you're trying to define him as that, uh, those are some of the more obvious tendencies that are very present in his rhetoric. Um, we've got a uh, rejection of modernism, of course, uh, the cult of action for action's sake I, I don't know what this one is uh which dictates that action is a value in itself and should be taken without intellectual reflection okay that's interesting uh disagreement is treason i think that's a pretty uh clear one and that lean that's not exclusive to fascism that that's uh that's also just like something that's big and just authoritarianism in general but you can't necessarily separate authoritarianism from fascism so you will see a lot of crossover here uh fear of difference that's a big one and i think uh you can see that big time in like some of the undisputed fascist or, or less disputed fascist states uh uh in mussolini's italy and like in Nazi Germany and in uh, when America is flirting with fascism, which we have done many, many, many a time. I don't think we've ever become a, a fulfilled fascist state, but we've always sort of cozied up to it and flirted with it from time to time. Uh, it often comes with fear of the other, fear of the immigrant often. Uh, today, it's the Mexican, but before it could have been the Irish and uh, 
then it could be the African, like, it's a lot of the people from the outside who are gonna, they're gonna do something. <laughs> uh, the Catholic, that's another one. Uh, America has really, uh, defined a lot of its, uh, xenophobia by anti-catholic rhetoric historically so we have that um appeal to frustration uh frustrated middle class that's another thing about fascism it it starts as populism it's like oh we're gonna we're gonna do something good for the working people the the in, in the case of america it's always appealing to like real americans real americans big quotes there which is a very interesting conversation because that always comes with another side of the com let go let go of that you little rascal it always uh leads to another side of the conversation who are the real americans and by appealing to real americans you are also defining who is not a real American, which often is where the repression comes in. Uh, it's often like utilizing a frustrated white middle and working class against uh, the people who are defined as different. Obsession with a plot. Oh, hyping up the enemy threat. Uh, I, I keep going back to America because I think it's important because we've flirted with fascism so many times, we can still become a full-blown fascist state. It could totally happen, and that's the reason we keep a lot of this political terminology alive, because it can still have use. Um, there's a book called It Can't Happen Here. It's a fiction, but I think it's a very good fiction that is well grounded in its time it was written in the 1930s by sinclair lewis that uh lays out let go of that he just undid my earring that's funny um he he lays out how quickly america could potentially fall into fall for like a, a populist turned fascist uh, and I, I couldn't do it justice with description, so I, I just recommend it. It can't happen here. And often when I'm talking about fascism, I will like reference that book like it, by saying like it can't happen here, but it can happen here is the, the thing. And it has happened here from time to time. Just because we haven't become a full-blown fascist state doesn't mean we haven't embraced fascistic tendencies a ton like in our treatment of African-Americans. And uh, during the Cold War, we embraced like fascistic tendencies in order to combat communism. We use fascism as a weapon against communism, which is interesting using one ism that we were just fighting against to attack the new enemy. Um, and uh, obsession with a plot, uh, that's one of the big examples. Like the communist threat was a huge part of that it, it really tied uh the enemy the the outsider the un-american the uh the one who is not in the in group to like uh conspiracy and americans love conspiracy we were founded in by people who were extremely conspiratorial um pacifism is trafficking with the enemy that's uh that is a uh, an important detail i would say um pacifism kind of gets a <laughs> gets a bad rep from both sides in that conversation i think because uh not fighting actively against fascism aids fascism but at the same time um fascists will say not fighting against uh our chosen enemy is aiding that enemy so that's something that can exist like across the spectrum contempt for the weak uh the populism tends to lean towards the idealized citizen which often portrays them as strong and the enemy as weak although i think it has a lot of contradictions here because when the enemy is a threat they come off as strong 
it, it it's weird uh like i talk about the cold war in relation to this a lot and i don't want to talk around myself and keep going in circles here but there was always a contradiction with how they would portray communists they would uh they would betray them as weak when it was convenient, but then they would couldn't portray them as this deadly conspiracy. We're going back to number seven here that could potentially destroy America like so easily or whatever. But they would often like couch it in language of like them being cowardly or whatever. But like they were strong when it was convenient. But uh, yeah. Um, but contempt for the weak also leans towards, uh, uh, the, uh, lack of willingness for, uh, the government to help ordinary people because fascism is used as such an anti-communist, anti-socialist tool a lot of the time, uh, it would naturally, uh, glorify things like hard work which is the natural uh attack used to take on things like socialism and communism like the uh the romanticization of hard work and then uh selective populism which we've effectively gone through and newspeak so we're getting kind of orwellian here that uh fascism and employs and promotes an impoverished vocabulary in order to limit critical reasoning. Um, if you haven't read 1984, I think it's extremely important. Uh, 1984 is interesting because it's one of those books that everybody thinks George Orwell is on their side, but he was like a hardcore anti-fascist. It's one of the great anti-fascist narratives of the 20th century. Highly recommend. Um, so the goal today we've not gotten to yet. We're going to be doing the F scale test, which was developed in 1947 by Theodore W. Adorno. And it, it uh, is there to identify the authoritarian personality. The F in the F scale stands for fascist. It, it's your fascist scale. And just because you rank high in your like F scale doesn't mean you are a fascist, but it could mean like you have tendencies to, uh, you might be a fascist, like if you go like real hardcore, but you also might have, you might be more likely to fall for a fascist or not see a fascist coming and not realize the severity of it. Like there, there's a lot there. And this is a, kind of a list of what the test thing is. I keep calling it a test. What the uh, the personality test? It is a personality test, I guess. Uh, so test works sort of. Uh, what it attempts to measure. We have conventionalism, conformity to tradition. We've talked about that. Uh, authoritarian submission, a passive notion towards adhering to conventional norms and values, and that's kind of a thing. Uh, it seems fascist often are very submissive while project they they are actively submissive while projecting strength which is a very i'm talking like the rank and file fascists not not the leader they're they're not submissive they're they're very that's a descriptor uh but it, it's sort of th these Political isms are often full of contradictions, so don't trip about it too much if some of it doesn't always make sense. That's kind of why they're hard to define. Authoritarian aggression, punishing and condemning individuals who don't adhere to conventional values. That is a, a clear one. Like if they're not in the in group, if they're not with us, they're against us sort of mentality. Uh, religion and ethics. I think uh, religion in particular is tied to like the conservatism because it always tends to look towards the past and tradition, which actually naturally sort of leans into religion because most civilizations have a traditional religion 
Uh, there's very few civilizations founded on uh, militant atheism. Uh, not yet, at least. Uh, superstition, that's sort of... Uh, the same thing we got going on here power and toughness so these are really going down a lot of the stuff we've already talked about anti interception projection of all inwardness of the subjective the imaginative and the tender-minded and of self-criticism this uh sort of plays into i think on here it said uh rejection of modernism there we go yeah and uh destructiveness and cynicism general hostility vilification of the human that's uh that's one there uh, uh yeah so there's kind of a it, it it's another thing that sometimes feels like a contradiction but isn't necessarily uh, the vilification is sort of reserved for the out group not the in group I, I think that's sort of how these things are you, when you see them you have to be like okay what applies to the in group what applies to the out group because they are completely different levels of humanity uh, in the mind of a fascist uh, projectivity uh, the disposition to believe that wild and dangerous things go on in the world, the projection outwards of uh, unconscious emotional impulses. I think this is uh, probably stoked a lot more in the modern day by our view of the news. Uh, I don't know perfectly how this would have applied when this thing was developed in the 40s if it was as bad i'd imagine it was still pretty bad but I, I i'd imagine it may have gotten worse over time because like whenever often i take these little quiz things that are like do you how many people do you think uh it, it's always like something I, I can't even think of an example, but something like overtly negative and like, how bad do you think it is? Bad? Uh, good? Okay? Bad? Really bad. And I tend to lean towards really bad, but the world is not necessarily as bad as my brain is conditioned to feel it is. That sort of, that kind of cynicism, I guess. Uh, sex ex exaggerated concerns with sexual goings on that's an interesting one that i think applies much more in the modern day that and uh projectivity i think today with like a lot of anti-trans rhetoric these things uh are kind of go together very well with the modern fascist personality people who are who are very concerned about trans people and in the projectivity thing there's like the common myth that there's like this epidemic of of uh trans bathroom predators that are going in there and they're like getting all of this this work done so they can go in bathrooms and perv on people that's not it's not a thing it it's that's widespread in any meaningful way but sort of if you combine the cynicism the projectivity and the the exaggerated concerns about sexual goings on that's sort of uh those are fascistic elements in our current society uh that uh may not check every box though it may ch check a lot more of these boxes than what i've mentioned so far it, it's just sort of a, a it doesn't mean the people who believe that are full-blown fascists but they may have some fascistic tendencies uh so yeah uh i think we have a decent understanding at this point of at least what this quiz test personality test thing is going to be measuring so there are some issues with tests like this in general it's not perfect and one of the big problems here is well first of all it's it was developed in a completely different time for a different society 
that's important also i know what i'm being quizzed on so i may shift my answers to make my f scale lower because i don't want to be a fascist so like consciously or not like you can't even necessarily trust me taking this without uh without taking that into account you you have to like consider like is he going to actively go out of his way to do answers that make him look less like a fascist very possible that's that's very possible that knowing what i'm being quizzed on would inform how i do my answers like i'm gonna do my best to be honest but you know we're all uh it, like even if i don't mean to i'll be looking at this through the lens of this is measuring how fascist i am <laughs> I don't want to be that. It, I'm, it's like uh, with the sorting hat and Harry Potter are just not fascist, not fascist, not fascist. And I could just will it to be less fascist than it really is. Um, but I'm going to take it anyway, and we'll just see where it turns out. You don't have to like take the, uh, the results for anything. And your results don't necessarily uh, aren't necessarily perfect either because there are flaws that come with any sort of quiz like this. This is more just, uh, it could be interesting, you know? I, I want to see what they were measuring at the time. All right, let's do this. Number one. Okay, so this is going to be a uh, measurement of uh, strongly disagree to strongly agree. Uh, rather than like any sort of yes and no, it's a, it's a spectrum, which is uh probably the best way of going about this uh there there are gray areas to a lot of issues so we'll see i may not be strongly in one direction or another on individual issues does that make me slightly fascistic on those little things uh, we'll see uh obedience and respect for authority are the most important virtues children should learn uh, strongly disagree. If I could strongly disagree on everything, anything, that would be one of them. Um, there's a lot of things that were taught in, like, public school that I highly disagree with, but a lot of it comes with, uh, uh, how our relationship with authority is uh asserted by like our teachers and stuff i was always like anti like pledge of allegiance because i thought it was creepy it was like like by the time i was in high school i was like oh this feels like something they, they, they probably do this in like north korea or something like why are we doing this uh but uh, I, I don't think at all that is the most important thing. It can be important. Like if they say it's important to uh, teach, I, I hate the word obedience, but respect for authority, I might say agree somewhat. Agree somewhat. Maybe. Or maybe I'd say disagree somewhat. I would have been a little bit more towards the middle. But if it's saying like it's the most important thing, absolutely not there are way more important things to be worried about a person who has bad manners habits and breeding can hardly expect to get along with decent people that is troubling language um perhaps a product of the time um it depends how you frame this i guess like I I could answer this like agree because I don't expect people uh, who are like extremely classist to embrace these uh, to embrace normal people. But I, I think given the framing, I will uh, mostly disagree, not not like all the way that way but there but there are natural divides that come from people who are raised in very different uh ways so it can be more difficult to overcome those divides but it's not impossible i think it, it's definitely possible if people would talk less and work more everyone would be better off bull crap uh i worked very hard at my old job i never got ahead doing that i worked minimum wage for five years um 
And now I am like a union leader at my current job, and I think I'm doing far better based on the amount of talking that I do. So I would strongly disagree. I'm 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 a very pro union individual, uh, given my experience working with such an institution. I'm going to like blow this up a little bigger so it's easier to see. There we go. Number four. The businessman and the manufacturer are more important to society than the artist and the professor. I think that's ridiculous. Um, it, if you, I, I think manufacturing can be a value. Um, there's a lot of good that does come from it, but to say that it's more important than like education and culture those are the things that make life worth living to me uh they're, they're not more important you could say like equally important they all play an equal role i feel like i'm going like happy hippie liberal a little too much on this and it's making me self-conscious but like it, the framing is so weird and like i don't want to give it that you know, but like I'm I'm working with the framing that it had. Science has its place, but there are many important things that can never be understood by the human mind. Um agree mostly. Somewhat. Mostly? I don't know. Um uh, I think the human mind has tons of potential to understand amazing things given enough time and effort um i will say agree s it, it's between mostly and somewhat i agree somewhat um there are going to be some things but i think our potential is incredibly high I, i'm optimistic or at least Today I am. Tomorrow I might wake up not feeling too optimistic. Every person should have complete faith in some supernatural powers whose decisions he obeys without question. Disagree strongly. Um, if you've watched me for a while, you know I'm not religious in the slightest. Um, I stopped believing in any sort of like supernatural stuff when I was really young. Like, uh, uh, I was in the single digits, probably like seven or something. I don't know. Something just clicked to me. And I was like, this doesn't make sense to me. Uh, but, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, that that's I think you can find strong morality through experience just as much as you can find it through cultural things like religion. Uh, young people sometimes get rebellious ideas, but as they grow up, they ought to get over them and settle down once again uh i'm a union leader <laughs> i i think informed by my personal experience i have to strongly disagree i got more rebellious when i got older uh though i'm still i'm 27 i'd still be considered a young person so i sort of maybe i'm not in the uh the bracket they're referring to there what this country needs most, more than laws and political programs, is a few courageous, tireless, devoted leaders in whom the people can put their faith. faith. Union leader guy. Yes, like I, I play a leadership role in my, uh, in my local union. However, <laughs> um, we'd be nothing without the rank and file. I, I think, and I one of those people who is more of a delegator than a do it all yourself or person like i wouldn't be able to do it without all the uh the amazing help that people have given me along the way so that that would be like i would if i strongly agreed i'd be like the the guy who rules the union with an iron fist that's that's not my personal way of leadership so i have to strongly disagree i've been leaning heavy in the uh strongly disagree category although i've differed twice so i i lean towards 
this side based on the framing now unless the framing of the questions changes and goes to like the, a different side of the political spectrum but it's all been sort of leaning towards a particular elitist tone so i don't know no sane normal decent person could ever think of hurting a close friend or relative um hmm I'll disagree somewhat. I think um, trauma, even that could lean towards the term sane, but I think good people can experience bad things. And those bad things can uh, make them more likely to do bad things i don't think it like throws them away entirely I, like i lean towards rehabilitative justice i know it, you can't save everybody but i sort of feel the need to have faith in humanity that people are capable of good um so i'll disagree somewhat but i'm not willing to go like all the way i'll yeah yeah so that uh, that's another one not leaning all the way to one side those are the more interesting ones for me some of these are very easy for me but th those where when i'm stuck in the middle it's uh i'm wondering what that says about me i guess we'll see nobody ever learned anything really important except through suffering that's that seems pretty reductive i'm pretty sure people have learned things not from suffering can suffering be a great teacher yes um i'm not willing to i'll say mostly disagree actually i think suffering is a fantastic teacher um persevering through struggles and such yeah uh but i'm not willing to throw out all the other things you could learn outside of suffering that seems silly that seems like incredibly reductive and I don't want to do that. What the youth needs most is strict discipline, rugged determination, and the will to work and fight for family and country. Strict discipline, rugged determination. I think rugged determination I kind of like. Um, because you need it to survive. But strict discipline... I don't know. Union leader guy. I I like it when people like question authority. Um to fight for family and country. What if your family and country are wrong? I I'm I'm a big proponent of like you can choose your family and you can choose what your country means to you. I think that goes against what this is saying. Um, so I will say, and also it's saying needs the needs most. I think they need a lot of things more than these things, like a place to live, financial security. <laughs> there's a lot of things, especially today, especially today. Like uh, there's uh, a lot of financial insecurity and people don't really know where they're going to be going forward so it, it, it's scary it's scary for a lot of people and they they need help uh an insult to our honor should always be punished um question is disagree strongly or disagree mostly honor is silly honor is kind of silly um because like Allowing other people to define your honor, I feel like that is, uh, like, I wa I love Avatar The Last Airbender, and one of my uh, favorite things in all of fiction is Zuko's journey, and I think it comes to a point where it's like, he allowed other people to define his honor so much and that was the issue there and i feel like once he learned to define what he 
felt his honor was he was sort of more at peace with himself and i've carried that with me for ever, ever since i watched it the first time and it's my favorite show i i didn't think avatar the last airbender was going to come into this but that show taught me a lot of lessons uh it's great it's wonderful sex crimes such as rape and attack on children deserve more than mere imprisonment such criminals ought to be publicly whipped or worse um it's hard to go against this stuff because we can all pretty much agree that sex crimes rape uh, attacks on children they are all especially bad crimes uh i'm strongly against capital punishment though just kind of on principle um you you could throw any form of criminal in there and i strongly disagree uh the optics of it sort of bug me like being in sort of a an authoritarian system that makes a display out of punishing people um there's something far more problematic that comes from that it teaches a fear of the state uh and uh when the state wants you to be afraid like like i'm getting all into like these anti see like i know what i'm being uh quizzed on therefore i'm using like anti-fascist rhetoric here <laughs> this is this is what's happening here so my result is what it is i i like to think i'm being as genuine as possible but i catch myself using anti-fascist language and i'm sort of feeling a little self-conscious like Oh, would I be saying this if I didn't know what I'd be measured on? I've always been anti-capital punishment, though, so there we go. There is hardly anything lower than a person who does not feel a great love, gratitude, or respect for his parents. Uh, strongly disagree. Parents often suck. <laughs> I've, no, I've met some sucky parents. You should not be grateful if your parents are bad people. So no i my love is conditional i if you haven't learned the unconditional love bull crap if if you if you do me super dirty i am totally better off like finding love with and from people who are not going to treat me like that um that's not saying th anything about my family personally uh, I'm, I, I don't want that to be confused there, but like if my pa parents were like abusive or whatever, I would not respect them. I would not love them. I would resent them for that. And I think people should do that. Like if your parents are crap, your parents are crap. Get out of there if you can. Do your best and be safe. Uh, most of our social problems would be solved if we could somehow get rid of immoral, crooked, and feeble-minded people. Oh my God. Feeble-minded, that's like, that's clearly um, leaning towards like kind of eugenics type language. That's, that's bad. That's really bad. Oh. Like, you can see what language they're hiding in here. They, they're not like, this might have been a little bit more subtle to the people at the time, but now we've sort of learned the lessons from eugenics, which is like, if you don't know, it's like race science that they use to like justify like white supremacy generally. And uh, feeble-minded is one of the, the big buzzwords thrown in there. I'm not... I'm not having that. Homosexuals are hardly better than criminals and ought to be severely punished. Disagree. They should be rewarded. <laughs> oh. It's a good time. It's a good time. Uh, when a person has a problem or... I, I don't actually mean they should be rewarded. <laughs> uh, they should be treated like anyone else. Uh, when a person has a problem or worry, it is best for him, we're, we're leaning towards one gender here, not to think about it and to keep busy with more cheerful things. I disagree mostly, so I'll say this. I don't practice what I preach on this one. Um, I 
that's why I'm only doing mostly and not strongly. Uh, when I'm troubled by stuff, I often try to distract myself. That's what I do. It's not the most healthy way of confronting the things that bother you, but that's how I live. Do I think that's the best way of doing it? Absolutely not. I think you should actually uh, try to uh, take on these issues and uh, try to come to terms with them in a healthier way. Um, I don't know. That's what I think. Nowadays, more and more people are prying into matters that should remain personal and private. Um, are they doing it more? I don't know. I think they did it more before, honestly. Uh, it, like, it, while uh, the news right now may indicate otherwise, with like trans panic and stuff like that. Like before that, it was gay panic. Before that, it, it was like an even stronger like racial panic. I think it's always been there. There's no answer for like, it's about the same. So I'll just put disagree somewhat. I, I don't want to assume like it's worse now because honestly, it's probably better now. Uh, the younger generation is incredibly empathetic and tolerant. I, I have so much faith in uh, in the people in the generation after me. I know there are some there's some shitty ones. That is what it is. But I I am not willing to uh, throw out how much better they seem to be than even myself, who's not that much older than them. I, I don't know. Some people are born with an urge to jump from high places. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Are they born with it? Maybe, maybe. As somebody who worked in childcare previously, um, uh, I've seen kids just trying to jump off stairs like from from like like one like as soon as they start walking they want to like jump downstairs agree somewhat i don't know i don't fully understand the question <laughs> uh so bear with me on that one is it a metaphorical high place i i don't know maybe i disagree somewhat maybe maybe it's a maybe it's more of a nurture thing than a nature thing I'll disagree somewhat because I tend to lean towards nurture over nature when it comes to human behavior. Although I don't feel super strongly about it. So I, that's fine. That's fine. People can be divided into two distinct classes. I don't even have to read the rest and I say I disagree strongly. That's incredibly reductive. We need a, a broad spectrum of what people can be divided into. Uh, weak and the strong. Yeah, no. I think if you are talking about weakness and strength, we are people are tend to be strong in some ways and weak in others. Uh, you can be physically strong and emotionally weak. Uh, I assume this is talking about like a strength of a certain strength of will, but I think that's that's stupid. That is dumb. That's a dumb thing. Someday it will probably be shown that astrology can explain a lot of things. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm, I'm not in a, I'm, I'm not big into superstition. I already said no on the religion stuff, so I, I don't expect that you thought I was going to say anything about astrology that I wouldn't say about religion. Wars and social troubles may someday be ended by an earthquake or flood that will destroy the whole world. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know the climate or whatever who knows what it's gonna do uh tying that to wars and so it, it is like a a bastard genie like hey end war okay i'll end war by blowing up the world <laughs> um it's a weird question weird framing but there we go i don't know what that tells them about me no weakness or difficulty can hold us back if we have enough will power um 
I think some weaknesses can. I'll disagree somewhat. I think humans are quite strong and can persevere through many, 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 many things. There are some circumstances that make it near impossible to succeed in life at what you want to do. So I, I'm, I'm not going to say you have no way of getting to your dream if you are born into a bad situation, but it's not, it's not easy. Uh, I'm going to hang out on this side, but like, I do think uh, with great perseverance, people have incredible potential. Maybe not unlimited potential, but incredible potential. It is best to use pre-war authorities. Okay, okay, th this is one that's a little bit more, uh, a, a little bit oddly timed. It is best to use some pre-war authorities in Germany to keep order and prevent chaos. You'll have to pretend it is 1946 when you answer this one. So uh, we're talking about post-World War II Germany. Uh, Germany is kind of being reconstructed after the war. And what they're saying is like the Nazi powers, uh, you'll, you'll be keeping some of some people who identified as Nazis in positions of power going forward in order to maintain a certain level of stability. Oh, uh, that's that's an interesting one, because one of the big problems with World War One was a massive crackdown on Germany afterwards that created resentment and uh, uh, instability and then eventually led to uh, the rise of the Nazis. However, I would say I will disagree somewhat. I think they would have to be judged on what they did individually. I think there may be some authorities that were less involved than others uh, that had better track records than others. Although I, World War II, um, Nazi Germany, it's not my best subject. But I'll say I land on the disagree side, but I don't feel as strongly because I feel like I don't have enough information. Like maybe I'm not educated enough on the subject to make a good judgment. It is a hard decision when you're picking stability versus uh, keeping, uh, like when that involves keeping Nazis in, in power. But I think uh, it, it, it's difficult because like not every German authority was equal during that period. I, I'm willing to recognize maybe there's a gray area. Uh, it's all a very bad, leaning bad sort of gray because you are helping one of the most vile states in the history of the world. But uh, I'm not going to assume that the local dog catcher is the same as uh, the chancellor. So who knows? Uh, I'm not going to put too much stock in that one answer. Most people don't realize how much our lives are controlled by plots hatched in secret places. Um. Nah. I'll say I disagree somewhat. I think there's tons of conspiracy coming from like the top especially in the united states we have like a collusion between uh big corporations and the wealthy and our politicians that control our government uh and i think people are often conspiratorial in the wrong way and maybe they're looking at the wrong problem but they tend to believe that there is something clearly broken about our system and it's people conspiring. They just may not always know the exact ones. So I would say I disagree somewhat or maybe even mostly disagree. I don't know, because there's this is me leaning into conspiratorial thinking, which I believe is a fascistic tendency. So who knows? But uh, yeah, I think most Americans at least believe that there's some sort of like plot hatched to uh, cause a lot of uh, that 
leads to a lot of societal problems. It's just, I think some of them think it's like Pizzagate stuff. Some people think it's uh, campaign finance for violations. We're, we're different in that way. Uh, human nature being what it is, there will always be war and conflict. I agree strongly. I, I don't believe in like a world peace end of history thing. I think we're always going to fight uh, to in different ways. There will not not just like if there will always be war. Who knows if war will always have the same form, but there will always be conflict. And uh, we got to take the conflict by the day. And uh, yeah, I, I don't there. There is no utopia. There isn't a light at the end of the tunnel. It's more tunnel and you got to learn to love the tunnel, you know? Familiarity breeds contempt. I, I don't know. Maybe? Disagree somewhat? Agree somewhat? I, I don't know. I'm going to say disagree somewhat. I don't know. I fall sort of in the middle there, but I'm leaning towards disagree. Seems like a... I, it, I know I know the saying, but I I don't know. It seems oversimplified. A lot of things breed contempt. Familiarity may contribute to that. I don't know. Nowadays, when so many different kinds of people move around and mix together so much, a person has to protect himself, especially carefully against catching infection or disease from them. Ooh this hits different <laughs> isn't that interesting like this we're not talking about so in the 1940s if you ask this question i might lean a little bit more towards uh like it's got xenophobic undertones but we're also coming out of a global pandemic and it's hard for me to disregard that. I think. Hmm. I'm going to agree somewhat. Isn't that so weird? Because that's not what I would have said like five years ago. Because like. Having lived through a pandemic and I, I don't mean that in like xenophobic. Uh, in a xenophobic way. Uh, but like when there is like, when you know you're going somewhere, there is disease, take precautions. That's basically what I'm thinking. I, I don't know. That's, that's an interesting one. I like that that one was a little bit challenging based on where we are now, when it probably would have been a lot easier if I was answering it, uh, in the context it was intended for. It shows that like we sort of change with with uh, our circumstances and this quiz is designed for the 1940s but a lot of these questions do hold up uh, as like interesting quandaries uh, the wild sex life of old Greeks and Romans was tame compared to some of the goings on in this country even in places where people might least expect hmm I'm going to disagree mostly. I think you're underestimating the Greeks and Romans, honestly. Uh, they were they were pretty wild. I, I think they they could uh, they could hold up to the current standard. Yeah, we may innovate in our own sort of ways, but I, I think uh, people have. I'd imagine people have always been have always been kinky. People are people have always been kinky. It's OK. Okay, there's no shame. There's no shame in the kink game. Uh, the true American way of life is disappearing so fast that force may be necessary to preserve it. Disagree strongly. What's the true American way of life? I refuse to be the one to define that. That's that's some fascist shit right there. Uh, it, it's hard to pretend it's not. Uh, 
Your overall F score is 2.03. You're a liberal airhead. What did you expect, honestly? We were here this whole time. You, you spent the past 30 minutes kind of knowing where I was going to end up, and here I am. Um, 2.03. So, the, and then there's all these, like, uh, individual things. So what is my lowest one? Authoritarian aggression is pretty low. Uh, I'm... I'm a more pacifistic leaning, so that makes sense. Uh, sex is pretty low. I do, do you, boo. Uh, projectivity. That's leaning towards the middle. That's within, like, the normal limits. Um, destructiveness and cynicism is kind of high. That's an interesting one. 4.50. Uh, what is that? You should practice doing things with your left hand. Joke's on you, fool. I am left-handed. Um, okay. So that's the one thing that's sort of, like, in a troubling state. And it's sort of on the lower spectrum of that. Technically, it falls within, uh, normal limits as well. It's, like, the high end of normal limits or the low end of, like, you should practice doing things with your left hand. <laughs> uh, Yeah. So that was interesting, but yeah, there's nothing particularly surprising about that to me. How'd you do? <laughs> did you did you take the quiz? Did you have fun? I hope you had fun. Um, I think this was a f this was fun. I love these little moral dilemma things, and framing it in a historical context makes it particularly interesting. Um. Yeah, I, I think that's all I got. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the vidya, and I'll be back in the near future with more like this, uh, potentially, if I find something like this. this, this I, I thought this was fun. The channel is becoming a GeoGuessr channel for a little bit there. It was the only thing I did. Um, so maybe there's some other stuff I can come up with to do. Uh, since I've kind of moved away from React videos, there's probably some other stuff I can have fun with uh, in the meantime. All right, thanks for watching, and I will see you all when I see ya. I'ma give money to the DJ. I'ma tell that nigga go replay. I know Lil B, yeah, nigga, I know Lil B. Shout out to the bass guy, uh, nigga, I said thank you, bass guy, huh? It ain't no fucking drive, huh? Yeah, nigga, we gon' fucking drive.